everybody, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting and the ways we get around our cities. And I am holding in my hands one of the most sophisticated pieces of tech you'll ever see. It took years and billions of dollars of development and I used it to make a grocery list. Yes, this is a grocery list that was generated by ChatGPT3. I used an AI to make a grocery list for one person for one week so I can go shopping and it's actually pretty good. It's uh, probably more healthy than I usually eat, but why am I telling you this? Well, let's back up a bit. So I'm happy to announce that we have a new sponsor on this channel or a new old sponsor, and that is the maker of this bag, Two Wheel Gear, the great maker of panniers, messenger bags, all kinds of bike bags. They're kind of a new old sponsor. They sponsored last year, they've signed on for another year, and I couldn't be more happy because I literally use this bag five times a week. Um, and I have for years, long before they were a sponsor, I use their products. And they are great for a number of reasons. One thing I like about them is that a lot of their bags are multi-purpose. This is a messenger bag, but it also converts into a pannier, and it's even got backpack straps, and I've taken this bag all over the world into business meetings, through the rain, and it's held up beautifully. But seeing the whole lineup of two-wheel gear bags gave me an idea. So I've said this on this channel many times, but one of the differences between using the bike as a functional transportation item in your everyday life to make your practical everyday existence better, the difference between that and recreational cycling is just carrying stuff. You need to be able to get around, run errands, and move stuff around on your bike. And so having access to all of these bags gave me a thought. There are lots of ways of moving things around on your bike, so I thought today I would test them. And so I'm heading off to the grocery store right now with my list of groceries for one person for one week and I'm going to carry it on my bike in four different ways. I'm going to be using bags, I'm going to try the classic baskets, I've got a bike trailer, and we're going to try a cargo bike and just compare the pros and cons of each of those. Alright, let's go get some groceries. Okay, one week's worth of groceries cost me about a hundred bucks. Let's see if it'll fit. I pretty much stuck to the list, but did make a few substitutions. I mean, chat GPT may think boneless, skinless chicken breasts taste good, but I'm with Uncle Roger. Go with thighs. Here's Panier backpack and uh, yeah, good capacity. We've got lots of groceries in there. This is Two Wheel Gear's Panier duffel bag, and as you can see, it holds a ton of stuff. It's huge. It's good for like a three-day getaway, so handling a bit of groceries is probably fine. I bet I can slip this whole grocery bag in here. Oh, no problem with room to spare. <laughs> I recognize uh, getting geared up like you're going on a bike packing trip with all these bags may not be for everyone, but actually just using this backpack and this duffel will pretty much take all of my groceries, but uh, that's kind of boring. I'm gonna try out these other bags because you may not want both these bags. There might be other combinations that work for you, so I'm gonna try to fill up these other bags. The challenge is, can you get a carton of milk into a frame bag? Oh, no problem. Okay, that was surprisingly easy to get everything in there. I have oodles of room, oodles of room to spare. Um, but I do have items in each bag, um, but just loading stuff up is the first part. We also have to ride with it, so let's give that a try now. No matter how many times I haul cargo on a bike, I'm always surprised how easy it is. Once you get going, you barely even feel it. Now, these bags are set up in a pretty good way. Um, despite having like 100 bags on this bike, um, I'm pedaling normally. It feels great. I 
barely feel the weight. I feel like I could take two weeks worth. It would be one week's worth of groceries for two people. Either way, this feels fantastic right now. It's so easy. Okay, there you go. One week's worth of groceries successfully carried by a bag system. Now, I've got some pros and cons here. Um, for convenience, I'd say these bags are convenient in a number of ways. One is that they all zip up, so stuff's not gonna fall out of your uh, bags when you hit a bump. Uh, conveniently, you can also take them off and bring them into your house so it's easy to load and unload. But they do have to be put on your bike and off your bike, so it does take a bit of time to get organized that way. Uh, these bags are great too because they're not just for groceries. Uh, you can use them for other things. You can use, they're great for commuting or uh, just using as a backpack, so there are other uses for them as well. As far as cost goes, I'd say a bag system like this is not the most affordable way of doing it, but these are great quality bags and buying a good bag is an investment. So if it works for groceries, you'll probably have it for years and years and years and using it for all kinds of things as well. So overall, using bag systems to get a week's worth of groceries, pretty good. Let's move on to the next option. Next test is baskets. These are classics. Let's see how much they can take. I've hauled a lot of stuff with these baskets, but I don't know if I've ever, ever tried a week's worth of groceries. This front basket is an Evo. This back one is an Axiom. I've had them for a couple of years. Use them a lot. They're good baskets. Let's see, we'll see how we do. I think I'll have to be a bit strategic here because I want most of the weight at the back because I don't like riding with a lot of weight in the front handlebars because it does seem to tip my balance a little bit when I turn the handlebars. Pretty good. Actually, not a problem at all. Is that everything? Let's see what it feels like riding. Taylor? Hmm. Taylor Swift? <laughs> that guy's amazing. <laughs> and not Taylor Swift. Okay, so that is the baskets. Now, I've got a soft spot in my heart for baskets because they're so easy and convenient. You just throw stuff in them and go. Uh, they're also affordable, so that's a, a plus. There are some downsides to the baskets, though. On the back is always the risk that something's going to come flying out of it. So what I should have done is got a, brought my cargo net. Cargo nets are a, like, you get them for 15, 20 bucks and uh, they just stretch over top. That'll prevent anything from popping out. So those are a good investment. The problem with baskets though is the front basket um, is that there's weight on your handlebars and it takes a lot of getting used to. Like when you turn, the weight can shift on you and it can throw off your balance. So there's ways around that. There are baskets that don't attach to your handlebars on the front. They do attach to the frame so you can move your wheel independently of the basket. But I find them pretty hard to find here in North America. I don't know why they're so rare. They're great. I don't have one. I also like baskets because these are removable baskets, so I take them on and off all the time, but you can get more permanent ones and you can just leave it on there. Uh, so it's always there for you, so that's really convenient. And they're less likely to get stolen because you can screw them right onto your rack and they're not gonna go missing, like maybe a pannier. I wouldn't wanna leave my nice panniers out for too long on, on the street where you screw a basket on there, great. Uh, but there are options. This one's removable, like I said, so that's easy too. So, you know, there are pros and cons of all of these and the baskets are a pretty good option. And I actually was surprised how much it carried. Uh, I didn't like having all that weight in the front basket, but if I balanced things out, out a bit better, I'd say definitely doable. Baskets are a viable option. All right, we are going next level now. I broke out my trailer. My beloved, irrationally maybe, irrationally beloved Ikea bike trailer. Yes, this bike trailer is from Ikea. I made a whole video about it once because it's such a quirky thing. It was part of the Ikea bike line that lasted, what, a year, a decade ago? Anyway, interesting, has an interesting story behind it. And if anyone, anyone out there has an Ikea bike, drop me a line. I'm weirdly fascinated with this moment in Ikea history. Anyway, this bike is actually quite good. It attaches to my bike, no problem. I used it a lot. I'll link to the video, uh, the previous video I did on it. And if anything was built for uh, a grocery trip, it is a bike trailer. Now there's all kinds of bike trailers, um, but they're similar in principle to this one. So we're gonna give it a shot. Let's load this thing up and see how we do. 
Okay, let's load this trailer up. Well, that was boring. So there's the bike trailer at the end of my journey. And uh, the most obvious thing about a bike trailer is the carrying capacity. Look at this, it's almost too big. My groceries were bouncing around in there and that's why they ended up this way. So carrying capacity is great. Uh, one thing that's not great about, about this specific trailer is that these open sides mean you can lose things through it and that has happened to me before. There are other bike trailers out there in the market that have uh, more of a box, so that's gonna solve that problem. You can, things can also bounce out, so some kind of net over top would be nice, but the capacity in this thing is just huge. So if you've got a family of four or six or 10 or whatever, I'm sure this trailer w would haul a week's worth of groceries for lots of people. The other nice thing about a bike trailer is that it, you get a huge amount of carrying capacity in a way that attaches to your existing bike. So you don't need to upgrade to a different bike or a car cargo bike or something like that. You can stick with your original bike and just add uh, capacity. Uh, convenience wise, trailers are a bit unruly, I find. Um, you have to sort of take them off. You need somewhere to store them. You have to have a special attachment on your bike so that it will uh, attach. They can get a bit finicky when you're connecting them and unconnecting them, but it's not, it's not, it's not a deal breaker by any means. And I do find uh, riding with a, a heavy load in the trailer that I do feel it actually more than when I have the same amount of weight on my bike in panniers or in a basket. Especially going up hills, it sort of feels like the trailer is just like pulling you back a little bit too. So it is a bit slightly, it's a slightly harder to ride with a trailer than when everything is on your bike. Some physicists maybe can explain that to me. I don't understand it. But other way, otherwise, if you want huge carrying capacity, a trailer is a pretty good option. And there's lots of them out there on the market. So do some research, you'll find a good one. All right, now we're talking. You wanna haul some groceries? This is the way to do it. So this is a Reese Mueller, a backfeed style cargo bike that I borrowed from my friends over at Power in Motion, a bike shop here in Calgary. And this may be the nicest bike I've ever ridden. It's fully electric, which I wanted to test an electric bike today as well. It's uh, got huge carrying capacity. It's actually built for children as well as cargo. So they, actually, they had to remove the children's seat uh, to lend it to me today. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're gonna try hauling a week's worth of groceries in this thing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. That was a breeze carrying this groceries was nothing for this bike. I mean, this is an amazing bike. It's a Risa Mueller backfeed style cargo bike. Backfeed's meaning it's got a box up front. Um, it's uh, got electronic shifting. It's got a carbon belt drive. And most importantly, it's electric. I really wanted to get both a cargo bike and an electric bike into this challenge because I do think they have a big impact on things. Uh, electric pedal assist motors can help no matter which configuration you choose. If you've got a lot to haul, if you've got a lot of hills in your neighborhood or you've got long distances, electric pedal assist bikes can be a game changer for any of the configurations you've seen today. And they really make a difference on a bike like this because as you can see, they're pretty big and heavy and that electric motor just makes things really smooth. This one's uh, built for kids. They had to they removed the car seats so I could uh, borrow it today um, But you could easily carry a couple of kids and some groceries or even three kids um, No problem whatsoever. And so looking at the pros and cons of cargo bikes like this the pros obviously are carrying capacity uh, It's huge um, The downsides are that they're pretty big and unruly you, you need a, a place a safe place to store them and they've also pretty big when it comes to price. I mean, this one is uh, top of the line. It's probably, depending on the configuration, between ten and $15,000. Um, 
But you, when you're thinking about cargo bikes like this, you have to think of them not in comparison to other bikes, but in, into comparison of cars. Because I hear from families all the time who say they ditched their min minivan and replaced it with a cargo bike and are so much happier for it. Uh, it's great family time. It gets you outside. Um, you're not stuck in traffic all the time. The, the maintenance costs are way less than a car. It's just better all around than a car. So that's the way to think about it, I think. But either way, this is a great option. Um, and think about electrics. Uh, you know, if you, uh, any of the configurations today, a pedal assist uh, might be helpful. But this one definitely uh, made short work of this grocery trip today. Okay, so there we go. Four different ways of hauling a week's worth of groceries. What'd you think? Were you surprised by anything? I think for me, the big takeaway is that they all worked. I mean, all were super practical, functional ways of carrying a not insignificant amount of stuff. And for me, I think that's the key takeaway today is that a bike can be a practical, functional way of getting around and doing everyday things in your life. I think the idea of hauling stuff on your bike still seems a little foreign here in North America where we continue to think of bikes mostly as an item for recreation. But I think this shows that there are many ways of uh, integrating a bike into your everyday life. The other takeaway might be that grocery shopping is mostly drudgery, but when you've got a bike ride at the beginning and the end, it's gonna make it better. It's just better. Any day you've got a bike ride in is better. So what's the best one? Well, I hate to sound like a refrigerator salesman, but that really depends on your needs. I would think the baskets are kind of like the entry level, like that's a way of getting started. They're easy to put on and off, they're affordable. You can throw stuff in, take it out easily, uh, but the capacity of them is pretty limited. Next step up is probably the bags and the panniers. These are great options, they're scalable. You can have lots of cargo or, le or less cargo. You can buy different types of bags, whichever you like. So I think those are a really good option and they will do most of the errands in your life, I would suggest. And also you can remove the bags, take them inside, carry them around, wear them on your back. They're a great option. Uh, the trailer and the cargo bike are like steps up in terms of capacity, but both have their drawbacks in some ways. Uh, I love that trailer, but also you need a space in your home to keep that trailer. Uh, it's pretty big, and so you, that's a requirement. Um, and the cargo bike means you have to buy a whole new bike, and those bikes are amazing. But those, you know, a good cargo bike like that is a family choice, and I think it could be a real, a real game changer for lots of families. But that's what it is. It's something that will integrate into your life in a big way. So they're all different ways of doing it. So really, like I said, it depends on your needs. Well, I've got some lukewarm milk and some bananas. They actually held up pretty well. I better go deal with those groceries. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.